Patina Paint Job Baby. Today what we got going on in this video is I'm going to be taking you through the entire process step by step. How we get your old beat up truck, car, or whatever you want to quote unquote patina out. I'm going to show you how I do it and at the end this is what we got. Let's get into it man. This is, this is one that I've been looking forward to. And now, you're watching the Patina Paint Shop with a celebrity doppelganger that is Megan Fox, channel of YouTube. Welcome to Bodie Vision. Hey, so what is up and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me yet again on another video. So in the last upload, the last episode with the 1965 GMC 2500 that I called the dumper, we got this vehicle prepped, ready, and primed. Now we can start to build on it for this patina paint job. We are going to start doing some layers, might do a little brush work, a little bit of sponge work, a little bit of airbrushing. All of these things and all of these techniques are going to make for a really cool job. Now one thing that I wanted to mention, I did the slam box a few months back. That paint job was also a patina paint job but I want to make sure every single one of them is different in its own way so I want to do it similar to my last patina paint job but I don't want it to just be a stamp and repeat of what I've already done in a different color so let's do what we can to make this vehicle unique in its own way and you should do the same thing with yours and every project that you're working on all right so now let's get into it so a patina paint job is all about layers now one thing that I've learned through doing a few patina paint jobs here is that when it comes to product just because we're going to want like a brown undertone as if the paint had worn away and there's brown under there, whether it's old primer or rust or whatever it is, we don't necessarily need to have that brown in the areas where it's definitely not going to be sanded through because at that point we're just wasting product. So I'm not even gonna touch the lower parts of the doors. I'm not gonna touch that with brown at all because the sun would have never worn it down or it would not have wear and tear on there. I can come across with an airbrush a little bit later if I want it to look a little bit dirty but as far as a brown undertone is going, I'm just going to do it on the entire hood, the top surfaces, and then kind of where it rolls over on the tops of the door, the roof, kind of over in this area, tops of the fenders, the top part of the door, but we don't need any of that brown anywhere where it's not necessary for that brown to poke through at all. We don't need to waste any time, we don't need to waste any product, so let's only put the undertone layer where the undertone layer needs to be because we can also do top layers. If I want a little bit more brown in some area, I can come and I can go on top and it's fine, it's all good. So let's not waste product, let's be strategic about what we are putting where and let's go for it. Round up on the top layers, anywhere where the sun would have hit, and then we will uh, figure out what's next. So this is kind of a light brown color. I like a light brown because then we can start to add black to it and make it darker and darker and darker. I feel like that works a little bit better than if you have a dark brown and you wanna add white to it. Then it kind of gets milky and that's just the way that I like to do it. It's easier to make a color darker than it is to make it lighter. So let's start with a really nice, light brown. And here's the color code if you want to save it. I showed it in my last video, but either way, let's get started. Light brown first. So we got our first coat or 1.5 coats going here. So I started off with that light brown and I only mixed like a half a cup's worth. I didn't have enough brown by the time I got to the roof and that brown I don't have too much left but I'm not too worried about it because I ran out of brown so I went straight to black inside the paint gun. Now, you don't gotta clean it out because what are you worried about? The colors are gonna mix. We want them to mix. We want some inconsistencies and we don't want to have, like if I'm gonna make this corner darker, I don't wanna make this corner darker, this corner darker, this corner darker, that corner darker. You kinda wanna make it controlled and random at the same time. So. This looks really good, but the problem is this looks super soft 
And the reason why it looks so soft is because my paint gun, the spray fan, and the atomization of the particles, getting real geeky over here, the atomization of the particles are going to make it land super kind of like fanned out. So it does not look good yet but I am happy with the foundation that we have. So let me give you a closer look. But right now, it looks a little bit marbly, looks a little bit weird. It does not look natural, but it is a good foundation for us to build on. I went a little bit darker with this corner right here just because I felt like it. That tip right there, I went a little darker. This corner, a little bit darker over here. I did some highlights coming over to the top of the door. And then we got the roof going on over here. The roof is a lot more black, but that's just how it actually played out. I don't care at all. And of course, you can still see the primary areas that I didn't touch. Again, the lower parts of the doors, some of these areas. This is going to actually be a two-tone job. We are going with the green for the majority of the truck. I want to do a white top because I like 60s trucks with the white top. And we are going to try to make that white match the natural patina on the bumper as good as we possibly can to give the illusion that this bumper weathered at the same exact rate that the white weathered. And that's important to go along with the lines of, let's make this truck tell a story, let's make everything match, and let's make this patina as realistic as possible. I know it's fake at the end of the day, but what are you gonna do besides have a little bit of fun, try to make it look good, and that's what I'm doing. I'm having a good time. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tune my paint gun down, kind of get some speckles going, try to get some highlights going, and start building on this foundation. You might think it looks pretty cool right now, but in reality, we are going to maybe see 10% of all of this in the final product. We are just building layer after layer after layer for this Fotina Platina paint job. So let's see. At this point, I am satisfied with those first two steps. Number one being laying out all of my undertones. We have a combination of light brown and black. And number two being speckling the panels. So now let's get into knocking out that white roof. I love a two-tone look, man. I don't know about you, but I think that looks so good. <laughs>
All right, so right now at this point, we have done a little bit of highlights. You can see I got some orange speckles going on as well as some black speckles going on. Now what I really like about the speckles is when you bring color on top of those speckles and you sand it down, those speckles are gonna pop through really easily because they're actually higher sitting on the surface being speckled out. Like I can rub over them and feel them. And I also did that quite a bit with where this white is and you can actually see the speckles and the white kind of standing up on it. So right now the white is a lot more clean than it needs to be. And what I'm going for with the white is something kind of like this, again, because I want it to match the wear and tear of the truck. So now that I did the white, and the white came way down, way down further than it ever needed to be, now I can just set my tape line right there and then we can go green below that because we don't need to tape it twice because then you might have a little area in between that gets weird you only need to tape it one time so do whatever color is going to require less that way you have less to mask off so i'm going to go ahead and put tape right here mask off everything that i don't want any green to be on and then i think we're going to go for the green and then we'll play around with some different techniques maybe i'll do a little bit more black maybe a little more brown maybe we'll come back with more green. The thing is, with a job like this, you kind of just wing it until you're happy with it, and then you clear it. But once you clear it, that's it. So let's uh, mask it off, mix up the green, and then go for that. Man, so that green laid out really nicely. Let's give it a moment to flash off and then we will go ahead and peel back our tape. After that, we are going to start sanding and working this to kind of give it that worn out look that we are going for. Also, one thing that I wanted to mention, notice on the areas that I knew I wanted brown to shine through, I wanted to save myself a little bit of time on the sanding. I intentionally made it thinner or I didn't even put green like in some areas on the hood, for example, because I knew I still wanted it to be brown. Why would you go ahead and cover every single square inch green if you know for sure some of it is going to be brown in the end. So go ahead and think about the process as you're doing the process to make it a little bit easier for you along the way. Now that we got the base coat done, we have the white roof, green body looking really nicely. Let's go ahead and start sanding it down until we get the look that we are going for. We want it to be worn out in high traffic areas like on some of the corners, on the top surfaces that the sun would have beat on it and whatnot. So we are going for wet sand, 800 on an interface. Let's go ahead and start working this.
So at this point, we got it sanded down and it's looking, it's looking good. I'm really happy with the direction that we are going. The roof is looking phenomenal. The white, the green, everything is looking really solid. So what I wanna do next is, it looks good, but it's just missing a little bit of depth or a little bit more layers to it. So all of this area, I want to start to attack it a little bit with an airbrush just so that way we can give a little bit more depth to this paint job. Now, I don't wanna go crazy and just do drip here, drip there, drip here, drip there. I'm gonna go minimalistic with it. I'm just gonna do a couple little rust drips off where the bolts for the mirror would have mounted, maybe a few off the handle, and I'm going to do some highlights along the way as well. So what I got right here, this was our regular base brown and I mixed it with an orange to kind of give us this lighter orange, kind of dookier looking color. But I mixed it until I was happy with how it looked next to the original bumper because that's a white with kind of a burnt orange, brownish orange. So this brownish orange kind of matches that. So with the airbrush, I'll mess around with this color, then I'll mess around with some black. And it's all about just continuing to add to the layers until you're happy with it. Then once you're happy with it, it's time to clear coat it. And after you clear coat it, there's no looking back. So let's do a little bit of airbrush work, man. Really liking how it's going so far. So with the airbrushing on this truck, kind of the approach that I took was a little bit of a less is more approach. I just kind of wanted to do some nice little details and I'm happy with that. So now let's move into the main piece of this truck that I am super excited for. Something that's going to really set this truck apart from the slam box is this stencil. My buddy Lou that's been helping me with this patina paint job process actually cut this out for me. He has the black C10 that we bagged a few months back. Really cool truck, super nice guy. Really appreciative that he's giving me a hand on this because it's fun to get together and work on something really cool with friends. So the stencil, I'm talking about this after the fact because I had to figure out my process, but now that I figured it out, I can go ahead and tell you and show you. So what I did was with this being on the truck, obviously you can't have every single edge down as you're going unless you just did some kind of a spray adhesive or we could have made this out of vinyl, but I felt like vinyl was a little bit too aggressive to stick on base coat. I didn't want it to pull any of the paint back up with it. So we just stuck it on the panel. My father actually helped me out with these steps. And then I just went around with my glove and I airbrushed all of the perimeter. The main reason why I wanted to airbrush the perimeter was to give us a nice and defined clean edge because I feel like that edge is really important. And even when Lou cut this out, he did my font perfectly. Like if you can see this font up here, it's a little bit wavy. He did these wavy, so that looks really good. So airbrush to establish the nice edges. After the airbrushing was done, we came back with a sponge brush and we kind of stippled in all of that white base coat. Now the white base coat actually reacted with the green base coat that was there because the green base coat was already all set up and flashed off. The white pad reducer in it, so the reducer started to mix with the green. That's why you can see right here, we have a little bit of a little bit of green paint that came off. But it's all good though, because the white and green actually added to the worn out effect. So enough talking about the process. Let me just let me just show you how it turned out, man. Super hype for the stencil. Door logo fits perfect. Everything is looking really good. And I'm getting excited for this truck.
So at this point, man, we are deep into the process. Let me just give a quick summary. We have those undertones, light brown and black. We have all those speckles, a combination of black and orange. Then we have the white base coat. Then we have the green base coat. Then we sanded everything down, wet sanded 800 until we got it to the look that we want. I also did some airbrushing along the way as well as that stencil. So all of those steps together, if you do that on your paint job, you're going to be in good shape if this is something that you are going for. Now that I'm satisfied with it, I think it looks good. I'm happy with it, I'm done with it. So let's seal it in once and for all with two coats of clear. We're gonna do the first coat a little bit light to kind of do a little sticky coat because the surface is so smooth with that 800. That second coat, we are going to stack that clear on there super thick. We are shooting for a very minimal orange peel factory look on top of this patina. Really neat effect. So let's go ahead and get that clear coat mixed up and smash it on there. You see how freaking good this truck looks, man. I am so excited with how it came out. I know some people were talking about the slam box and this being so similar, but to be honest, I am a lot more happy with how this came out. Don't get me wrong. Oh, Lola, what are you doing in here, man? Come over here. Come on, come on, let's look. Come here, come on, let's look at the truck. I am really happy with how the slam box came out and I'm happy with how this came out, number one, because it is quite a bit of a different approach. Don't get me wrong, I think the slam box came out really cool, but this being a little bit of a different approach, I really like this one as well. The idea is I'd like somebody to see both vehicles if they were parked next to each other and say, this one's really cool, this one's also really cool in its own way. Also be able to tell that they were done by the same person, but not ever say, oh, they look the same. So. I don't know, it's up to interpretation. I guess that's how art is, and if you want to view this as art, I do. Lots of layers, lots of techniques, lots of messing around, lots of skills. Got some help along the way from my buddy Lou. My father helped out. Everything is coming together. So coming up, what I have to do, I got to make the bed match the truck, then get that back together, and the dumper. The dumper is wrapping up, man, really quickly. I got speakers coming, radio coming. Really excited for this. This vehicle has never moved under its own power as I've owned it. We got the drive shaft in. So we're going to see this thing on the road really soon, man. So with this entire project, leave a comment down below. Let me know how you would have done it different. Let me know if you still think it should have had a professional, really clean paint job, and then send me the money that that would have cost to cover product, time, and you know what I'm saying. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. I'm out. 
this truck looks good. See ya.